Welcome back everyone to another frame rated video. Today I want to continue my GPU breakdown series with the PlayStation 5 being next on the list. Now the PS5 is packed with cutting edge technology that's designed to deliver an incredible gaming experience, but today we're going to dive into one of its most critical components, the GPU. But before we get into the specifics, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. That way you can catch my future GPU breakdown videos and tech videos in general. And if you like this video, make sure to smash that like button. That way YouTube will actually show this video to other people who may enjoy it as well. And so the algorithm can actually like me for once. So the PS5's GPU is based on AMD's RDNA2 architecture, the same one that the Xbox Series X and S use, but uses a custom design built specifically for this console. It boasts 36 compute units clocked at up to 2.23 GHz, delivering a total of 10.28 teraflops of raw graphical power. A teraflop is a measure of the GPU's ability to handle floating point calculations per second, and in simple terms, it's a measure of how fast it can process graphics data. At 10.28 teraflops, the PS5 GPU is two and a half times more powerful than the PS4 Pro, which had 4.2 teraflops and was impressive to its users even back in its heyday. So the PS5 is a considerable upgrade in graphics power to the premium last-gen console, and at 1.8 teraflops on the original PS4 itself is way beyond even that. But raw teraflops aren't the only measure of performance, as we see in a lot of comparisons with the Series X, which has 12 teraflops, and the PS5 with its 10.28, we've seen situations where PS5 takes the lead in frame rate, and sometimes it's doing so at the same resolution and graphics settings as the Series X. So even though on paper it doesn't quite have the high teraflop number of its competitor the Series X, we do see the PS5 perform very well and punch above the weight that many people anticipated before it was even released. Another one of the large changes from the old GCN architecture in the PS4 and PS4 Pro was new technologies in general, such as ray tracing, which is a major topic with current gen consoles. But what is ray tracing? Ray tracing simulates the way light interacts with objects in a 3D environment creating realistic shadows, reflections, and lighting effects. The PS5's hardware-accelerated ray tracing means games can deliver more immersive visuals, think better reflections and puddles, realistic shadows in dark corners, and improved light scattering. The PS5 marks Sony's first console to use this technology, although this feature is known for having compromises in frame rate or resolution to be used on the Series X and PS5 alike. And that is because it's very hard on hardware, and the RDNA 2 architecture is the first architecture that introduced ray tracing at a hardware level and made this all possible. Another interesting aspect of the PS5's GPU is its use of variable frequency. Instead of locking the GPU to a fixed clock speed like its competitor, the Xbox Series X, it actually dynamically adjusts its frequency based on workload and available power and also what the developer inputs for. This allows the PS5 to balance performance to either the CPU or GPU where it needs it. But why would this even be important? Well, it means the GPU can boost its maximum frequency to 2.23 GHz when needed for graphics-focused moments, but it can also scale back in less GPU-intensive tasks to increase CPU frequencies when the CPU needs a extra hand at performing specific tasks. And this balance of being able to switch between GPU and CPU focus, albeit small, allows a developer to time when to use which component more and when it makes sense to do so. Now, of course, the PS5's GPU doesn't just work alone. It's tightly integrated with the console's custom Zen 2 based CPU and high speed GDDR6 memory. This GDDR6 memory runs at 448 gigabytes per second. This is more than double the bandwidth of the original PS4. This makes a massive difference, especially in open world games and games running at higher resolution where the GPU needs to process large amounts of data. So how does this translate into real world performance? Well, games like Horizon Forbidden West, Spider-Man Miles Morales, The Last of Us Part 1 are just a few perfect examples of the PS5 GPU in action. Displaying gorgeous graphics at high resolutions with performance modes available for those who prefer higher frame rates well beyond what its predecessors could handle. Overall, the PS5's GPU is a massive leap forward in console gaming, offering a balance of raw power, innovative architecture, and new visual capabilities. It's a crucial part of why the PS5 can deliver such a compelling gaming experience. And that's it for today's deep dive. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.